أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القاعلون ولا يحصي نعماؤه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتحدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الحمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم وأحل البيت الطيبين الطاحرين المعصومين المظلومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين صاحب العص والزمان خليفة الرحمن ما ملنس والجان ولعن الله وعداه مجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الحدى والفرقان صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم The life and lessons of Prophet Sulaiman عليه الصلاة والسلام has been our topic tonight is our third lecture Last night we began the topic by looking at a little bit of the philosophy of stories in the Quran and it is part and parcel of the system of tarbiya and system of nurturing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in order for us to actualize our potential inside of us, He places and surrounds us with various tools in our life. Be it the prophets of God or the imams, our parents, you know, uh, the Qur'an, the scholars, our, our, our own conscious and reasoning, whatever the case may be, it seems as if that God is obsessed with our success. And one of the areas that uh, you know, he, um, he guides us in is the retelling and the relating of stories of those before us. I mentioned last night that it is vital sometimes that we you know, understand the stories of those before us. Even to my parents out there, I say this wherever I'll, I'll, I go, and I want to say it now as well, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of you are immigrant parents. You've come from your respective countries. You settled now, you know, in New York or in Northern Jersey or, you know, um, you know, or wherever right now you're, 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 you're listening to me from. And, but that has gone through a process, right? Um, it's important that you tell your kids that story. You tell your kids your journey. Right now they're seeing the end result of decades of your hard work. But when you first arrived, I'm sure it was a struggle. It wasn't easy to adjust to a new culture, a new language, miles away from home, right? And, you know, for, for, if not for anything else, then to, you know, to teach them a little bit about the idea of resisting and revolving and, 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 and rising up to the challenge. Last night we talked about two main reasons why God includes stories in the Quran, 200 plus stories of various people at various levels. These are not just about the infallibles. We have an entire chapter named Luqman in the Quran. He was not infallible um, in the sense that we know it. Um, you know, talks about the mother of Musa, talks about the, you know, the Ashab al-Kaf. All these are stories that we hear. Um, and one of them is the idea to bring about a sense of resistance inside of us, to let us know that, you know what, we can do this thing called life. We can face our enemy within and still conquer it and be successful. And secondly is for Ibrat, for lessons, to learn. To learn the nature of human beings, to learn how to deal with arrogant powers, to learn how to, you know, guide those around you, to learn how to guide yourself. That was all last night. Now we begin the life of Nabi Suleiman tonight. And, you know, what I would like for you all, for you all to do is make this somewhat interactive, is to, you know, have the Qur'an ready and be with me. You know, we'll go through one verse of the Qur'an today, uh, but there will be days where I, you know, I throw at you in multiple verses of the Qur'an. Uh, initially, I'll talk about the actual incident, and then we'll go through some verses. In some days, there won't be any verses of the Qur'an, but it is important that initially we understand a little bit about um, um, how the Qur'an portrays this story. So as I mentioned last night, um, you know, he is mentioned 17 times in the Qur'an across seven different surahs, Nabi Sulaiman is. 
Um, and that's a, that's, a, that's a sharp contrast from Nabi Musa Alisa from last year of 900 verses in over 20 different surahs. Um, but as I mentioned last night, well, one of the reasons why I chose this prophet was, number one, because I don't think a lot has been discussed on him. Number two, I found a lot of the instances, the small conversations, um, to be incredible. And inshallah, if we get to one today, that's fine. If not tomorrow, for sure, we'll, we'll begin those conversations. Um, he is, uh, was, is from, um, or was from the Bani Israel tribe. Um, he is the son of Prophet Da'ud, David. And, um, you know, he belongs to the generation of Nabi Yaqub, a.s. Um, he is named Suleiman for a reason, because he had a good heart. Okay, the word Suleiman, Salman, as we say sometimes in our Urdu culture, Right? Solomon sometimes they have in the Christian world. That actually comes from, we have a tradition that says it comes from, uh, you know, it connects to the word Salim. Which sometimes means, uh, you know, um, um, means good, means free of evil. You know, the Quran refers to the heart as, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَا لُونَ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَطَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Right? This قَلْبٍ Salim is a pure heart. That on the day, the Quran said, on the day, will non, n nothing will benefit you. Not your mal, not your property, nor your children, except for the one that will enter Allah and, and in the presence of Allah and go to Allah with a sound, secure, free, beautiful heart. Salim is the word used. So Salim is that, is that word that's, you know, from there you derive Suleiman or Salman even, right, that we have inside of our Urdu culture. In the Quran now, you know, um, from Surah Yasad, this is the 38th chapter of the Quran. Okay, uh, and again, I ask you to please open up that, that that Quran if you can right now through your app or through a Quran. Make it interact if you want to. That's fine. Surah Yasad, 38th chapter of the Quran, verse number 30. Verse number 30. Allah now talks about the idea of you know how He introduces Nabi Sulaiman in the Quran. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa bahabna lidaouda lidaouda Sulaiman. Okay. He doesn't say that we gave Daoud Sulaiman. Wa bahabna habna or hiba is known as a gift. Okay. You gifted that. Okay. Like for example, in you know, in the very famous du'a of our qunut sometimes that we have. From Surah Al Ali Imran, verse number eight, I believe, we say, "Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da ida hadithana wa hablana min ladunka rahma." Right? Oh Allah, you know, uh, don't do not allow zeh, do not allow deviance to enter our heart ba'da ida hadithana after you've already guarded it and gift us wa hablana, gift us from your special mercy. So this idea that Allah says, "I'm, I'm not giving you Sulaiman." I'm gifting Da'ud Suleiman. Right? So we know this is a very special blessing. And right away now he says, you know, he says, Ni'mal Abd. What a beautiful servant Suleiman is. Okay? A beautiful servant Suleiman. His story is unique, guys. And, and you know, I want to spend a little bit of time on this very simple verse, but I want you to understand how unique his story is and how sometimes it's very relevant to what we're going through today. A lot of my young guys out there, you know, I, I, I want you to understand these stories are there for a reason. Um, the last portion of the verse, after, his, after Allah said we gifted Da'ud Sulaiman, and, and, and he was a beautiful, he was a ni'mal abd, he was a blessing of an abd for us, he says, innuhu awab. The verse ends off by saying, in who surely he is, awab. What does awab mean in Arabic? It's a very beautiful meaning, and one that really ties in properly to Nabi Sulaiman. Awab is known as what's called sighe mubaligha. Okay? Sorry. Sometimes when you speak while you're fasting, it gets really dry in, in, your, in your throat. I'm trying not to cough. <clears throat> Um, innahu awab. You know, ob is the actual word. Ob means to return. Okay? That's what ob means. Alif, wa, wav, ba. Ob. Awab is the one who returns a lot. 
Okay, and that's sire mobalera. Mobalera is something that is done over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. For example, we have sajda, sajid, sajjad. Right? Sajda means prostration. Sajid is the one who prostrates. Sajjad is the one who prostrates a lot. Who time and time again prostrates, right? Imam Sajjad Ali Salam, Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad Ali Muhammad, is known as that because, you know, he was Zainul Abidin, right? He brought zinat and beauty to, uh, to worship, and part of that was that he would always be in a state of sujood, okay? Awb is one word, awab is a different state altogether. The verse says, you know, he was one who would be frequent in returning towards Allah. He would constantly go back to Allah. What does that mean? He would go back to Allah. How does one go back to Allah? Um, and it's important that we understand this idea that you know there was nothing that ever stopped him from going back to God. Okay. Look, guys. You know, uh, uh, I'll give you very simple examples. Oh, what's on my face here? I'll give you very simple examples. Okay. Sometimes you're, 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 you, you know, you're on a trip and you make multiple trips a year, let's say. You're a traveler for your business, for your profession. You travel a lot. You know. And there are moments that you want to go home. Halfway through your trip, you want to go home. You miss the home. You miss the family. You're homesick. You know, you're tired, this and that. You miss the kids. You miss, you, you miss the family. And something blocks you from going back. Either your obligation of the trip or something else or there's flights or... All the barriers are there and you can't get home until the end of your trip in a week. That's not what awab is. Awab is somebody who returns back, right, very frequently. I mean, there's no barrier, there's no conditional stop for him. He keeps coming back to God. Okay? And, and, and that doesn't mean that, you know, he's deviated. That as many times as I go back to God, that's how many times I've moved away from God. No. Meaning back to God is that he would take everything that was given to him in this world and he would take it back to God. Understand the point. It's a very, very unique point of his. Okay? And it's very, very uh, um, critical in the understanding of the life of Nabi Sulaiman. Okay? That awab is the idea of returning back. Taking whatever he was given and returning it back to God. Meaning what? Meaning making everything in this world godly. It's essentially what in Nahu Awab means. If, if we take it as, you know, as like Toba, right? Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayh. I beg Allah for repentance uh, and I return back to him. That returning back to him is someone who has sinned to the point where now they've moved away from Allah and thus the need to beg for forgiveness, right? To return back to God. But we're talking about a masoom prophet. What does it mean when we call him to be awab, returning back to God? It means that he takes everything back to God. He doesn't let anything block the remembrance of God. And the one thing about Nabi Suleiman, I apologize. <laughs> it happens sometimes. I tell you, I you know, as hard as it is to listen to me over a device or a TV, it's it, it's 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 equally as hard to speak to a to a camera. There's literally nobody right now around me. Is a camera, and sometimes you know, you know, it's been a it's been a long fast today, so sometimes it gets the better of me. I think to myself, if I'm yawning through my own speech, these guys must be. Snoring right now for sure. Got I me. Mean, they, they must be out. There's no way. If I can get barely get through my my own speech, what are you guys all going through? Anyways, um, so the idea is that he never allowed anything to not make his way back to God. That alone is a beautiful lesson for us. Okay, remember we're going to extract more lessons from Nabi Suleiman in this year's series as opposed to like a storytelling uh, uh, experience that we had last year with Nabi Suleiman. Because it, it, it simply it, it, just, it just doesn't exist right now in the Quran, okay? The, the way that it's laid out. What does that mean? That means that we have to find God in everything that we do, okay? And we have to broaden the scope of worship. Broaden the scope of worship. What does that mean? That means that, you know, 
Uh, worship is not only a, a selected, limited few acts that we know in the Sharia, in the books, etc., etc. It's not like that. It's actually, you know, whatever we can do for God to, 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 to push God forward is something that we are actually going to have to do. Okay? And, and, and the essence of, 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 of taqwa and piety is just that. Piety is, is God consciousness. To find God in everything that you do. You know, in the West, they talk about the idea that, you know, if you don't find joy in it, don't do it. There's no joy, don't do it. There's no joy, don't do it. Islam and taqwa says, if there's no God in it, don't do it. And you can find God in almost everything. It's all about intention. It's all about mind, it's mindfulness. It's all about being present in the moment. Why am I doing this right now? Why am I coloring with my child? Why am I watching a television show with my spouse? Why am I, for example, on my Instagram page? Why am I, for example, browsing through? Everything can be even, even a half an hour video game, a half an hour video game, not a seven and a half hour video game. A half an hour video game can also be for God. The Prophet says to Abu Zar, Abu Zar, Attach a near to everything that you do. Be conscious in everything that you're doing. Don't allow this, this society to numb you into your life. That we do things unconsciously. Just kind of strolling on our phone, you know, scrolling on our phones, going through our feed, going through our, you know, unconscious, not, no idea what we're doing. Before we know it, three hours pass, right? Sitting there just playing FIFA or playing Call of Duty or whatever the case may be, right? And then just before we know it, you know, four or five hours later, my eyes are burning, my head is pounding, my thumbs don't work properly anymore, right? And I'm being uncon... No, we can't be. We have to be conscious of what we're doing. And if that worship is done enough, if that consciousness is done enough, know that Allah will support you in that, will help you in that. Allah says, for the one now who struggles in our path, Allah will, will, will open up the doors for him, open up the path for him. Provided we don't allow ourselves to be unconscious. I don't mean like passed out unconscious, like behosh. No, I don't mean behosh or unconscious. I mean that, you know, to the point where now you're not conscious of what you're doing. Consciousness, mindfulness, that's all part of taqwa. Okay. I'll give you a very simple example of how God can help us, okay? The example I've given before. I'll tell you what happens now. If we're not able to be those who can bring back everything to God, like Nabi Suleiman described it, it really is a beautiful laqab. In Nahu Awab, beautiful laqab of the idea that God sees this man as a man who constantly finds me, meaning me being God, inside everything that he does. Even those things that might be a distraction for normal people, like a kingdom. Nabi Suleiman <laughs> owned a kingdom the size that we've never even heard before. What he was able to do on this earth was unheard of. And being a prophet of God, we might even think, wait a second, that's blasphemous. I'll get to that in a couple of nights. He's flat out asking, it's in the Quran, he's asking Allah, give me a kingdom, a palace, a mulk, the likes that no one has ever seen before. We, that's like me asking me for a mansion of a house. The biggest that this world can offer. I want that. You think, wait a second now, Safarullah, Sayyid, you know, you're a Mawlana, you shouldn't be asking for these big things. It's blasphemy. Prophet of God is asking for. I'll get to that in a couple of nights. But just so you know, those are the types of things we're talking about. He doesn't allow the lavish, quote unquote, apparent lavish style of a palace or a king to distract him from God. He would always return back to God. Always find God in everything. Even those that are apparently dunyayi, worldly, satanic perhaps for others, was godly for him. The example I'll give you is, is, is a GPS. A GPS. Right? I'm on my driveway. I'm going to someone's house for the first time. He texts me his address. I pop it into my, into my Google Maps and I begin my drive. And I follow to a T, make a, left, make a left here, make a right here, merge onto this, okay, fine, perfect, you know, great. 20 minutes into the drive, I make a wrong turn. It says make a left, I made a right. Or it says turn, turn, turn right, and I, and, I, and I drove ahead. What does it do at that moment? The GPS does what? It reroutes. 
rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. And it makes you go through sometimes three or four different turns to get to the point of deviation, the point where you made the wrong turn. It gets you there and then it repeats that. Now I'll make a right here. Okay. If I make a right there and the 10 minutes later I make another wrong turn or, I'm, or, or I go on the, on, on, the, on the northern highway as opposed to the southern one or I go east, east instead of going west, again, it'll do what? It'll reroute. It'll reroute me a thousand times. Literally a hundreds and hundreds of times it'll reroute me. It'll never say, look, bro, what are you doing, man? Are you okay? Like, I, I mean, you know, I, like, do you really want to go to this guy's house? Why do you keep stalling? No, you won't hear that from the GPS. It'll say rerouting. And sometimes it'll make you go all the way back, but it'll get you to the point of deviation. Provided what? What is the one condition to make sure you reroute, reroute, reroute? The address in the GPS doesn't change. The address in the GPS doesn't change. I don't think there's a single one of you right now that doesn't want to be pleased by God. I think all of you are aspiring to be as godly as you can. Right? Now, what blocks us sometimes is that we have these false, you know, these false truths that we have inside of our head about ourselves, mind you. We have we have accepted the fact that these things are that that's how these things are, and they're, you know. I'm just not godly. I'm not spiritual. I would sometimes sit, I tell you, I, I, I kid you not, I would sometimes sit in a discussion with somebody. This man is, you know, serving mankind, okay? Makes tributes, uh, uh, trips to Iraq, let's say, for example. Opens up free medical clinics all the time. Helps, helps people get to Hajj, right? Um, you know, uh, donates when, when, he can, when he can to the, to, 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 to the center, uh, you know, uh, a great family man, clean family man, works very hard for his money, right? Make sure that, you know, he, 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 he spends it on his, on, on his family. He may, not, he may not have a beard. He may not come to, to, to the mosque on Thursday nights. He's the same guy that will sit there and tell me, you know, say, I'm not that religious. I'm not, I'm not as godly as people like you are. I get that all the time. And he's convinced himself that I'm not religious. Meanwhile, Hearing his life and what he's done, all I see is God in his life. Okay? He may not know it, but he's, asp he's aspiring to be godly. And it, it can be argued that he's far ahead of the game than a lot of us are who look the part. We got the beard, we're there on Thursday nights, we have the hijab on our head, but we don't come close to what other people do. I'm sorry, we don't. And then we have the gall to look down on those who may not look the part. I'm not condoning shaving a beard or, or, or not wearing a hijab. What I am condoning is, uh, or condemning that. Sorry, yeah, I'm con what, I'm, what, I, what I'm condemning is the idea of us, you know, being judgmental. I don't know why sometimes the most irritating people for me are the ones that claim to be the most religious. I'm sorry. They're the ones that are most narrow-minded. They're the ones that, that, that are the most uh, intolerant. You know, they don't allow anyone to grow. We've labeled them, and that's it. That's how they will be. Ila yom al qiyamah to the day of judgment. That person would be like that. They're, they, you know, there's no growth. There's no nothing, right? And it's just it, these are false truths that we have inside of our mind. We all want to aspire to be God. Sorry, to be close to God. So we put God as our GPS destination. We do, provided that we don't change that. He will reroute us a thousand times. He'll reset us every single time. If, if, if it's been years since you have begun fasting, and, and this year you thought, you know what, I'm going to try fasting. I'm going to try reading one verse of the Qur'an, one verse of the Qur'an every single day. Take tiny steps, right? One verse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make sure I pray at least one of our, my, my prayers on time. Let's try. And six years later, and we're bound to feel like God doesn't want to hear from me. You know, why would he want to hear from me? Blah, blah, blah. But... You know, if we have, you know, reset ourselves, when that restart and reset happens and we're back up and running, they're waiting to embrace us as God, guys. We have to believe that. Ujibu da'wati da'i idha da'an, he says in the Quran. I will answer the call of any da'i. Da'i is the one who does da'wah, who calls out any da'i. In this verse in Surah Baqarah, he never says, I will only call the infallible, I will only answer the infallible. I'll only answer the ones who have a thickness of a beard. I'll only answer the ones who tie their hijab with 20 pins, let's say, for example. 20 pins. I have girls too in my house. 
and those pins end up everywhere on the couch, you know, and, you know, I just, you can't say anything, right? Yeah, anyways. Um, 20 pins, right? And so, you know, provided that you don't, you know, that's not what he's after. It's a very, very generic da'i, whoever calls me, ibad da'an, whenever you call, I'll answer your call. Whenever you call. You want to go see, let's say, the, 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 the president or prime minister of your country? You have to book an appointment. They'll let you know their time slot. You can come on this date. At this time, you have 15 minutes of a visit with the president, let's say, for example. Let's say, for example, it's on their terms. But God is not saying that. God's saying when you are ready and when you reset yourself, when you're ready to come back to me and do awab to me, come back to me, ob to me, ruju to me, whenever you're ready, I am also ready. If there's been distance between me and you, it's been you that's placed that distance, not me. Not me. So now to merge that distance, you have to make that movement, not me. I've always been here. Now you'll argue and say, what about those that Allah says, khatama ala, you know, khatama qulubihim, I, we've sealed their hearts. Those are people who have chosen now to seal their hearts. I don't want God in my life. You know, there, there are people who are fearful of the month of Ramadan. Only because they're, they're bound to face God and they don't, they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. And the reality is that we have to start to look at God as worthy of returning back to. Returning back to. And ask him for that. Beg him for that. Would any of you ever ask a penny from a king? <laughs> Would any of you ever ask a penny from a king? No, you wouldn't. You'd ask for bags and bags of gold from the king. You made all that way. You found your way in front of the king only to ask for a penny. People would laugh at you. You said, no, I'm here now. I'm going to seize the moment. And I want bags of gold. We stand there now. Honor Musalla, Maliki Yawmiddin, Master of the Day of Judgment. Master of the Day of Judgment. And we ask for what? What do we ask for? How about we ask for the impossible? Knowing full well he is that entity that makes the impossible possible. And if that impossible is for me to become godly in the month of Ramadan, for me to somehow now transform my life into a godly life, then so be it. And I tell you, and I've said this before, the smallest of changes, the smallest of steps. What is your tiniest step to re re return back to him? The tiniest of steps. The time, you know, to, to break the habit of my phone, for example, as opposed to it being on my side table, I'm going to put it across my room so that when I wake up, I think twice, you know, is it really worth me getting out of my warm bed, walk across the room, you know, uh, take the risk of ruining my sleep, also I can check, you know, who commented or who, who retreated or who followed or who messaged or, right? Those are small steps. We are, you know, for some reason, we take it upon ourselves to go big or go home. Right? All of, you know, this big bang and, you know, let me tell you one hadith and then we'll end tonight. Imam Ali says, small acts of worship done consistently are more beloved in the eyes of Allah than large acts of worship done inconsistently. Allah's journey is meticulous. It's monotonous. It's a crawling speed. There's no rush. It's not, it's not how fast you go, it's have you made any progress or not. Moving your phone from a side table to a dresser is progress. Bringing the Qur'an back uh, uh, down from the shelf and putting it beside you during, during Sahri and maybe not reading because you can't read it and you have a tough time reading the Qur'an, that's progress. It goes from your shelf to now on the table. Leave it there. Every morning when you wake up for Sahri and Suhoor and you have your kuju and you have your last quick, quick, quick water, You'll see the Qur'an. One day, that Qur'an will open itself for you. And you read one verse. From one becomes one page, one page becomes half a juz. Before you know it, you become godly. But it started with a small, small, small step. We want to turn back to Allah. We want to become like Nabi Sulaiman. In Nahu Awab, returning back to Allah constantly, we have to begin with the tiniest of steps. 
Allah's not about fireworks, man. He's not about the Big Bang. He's about something that's consistently small. Because he knows if, you, if, if you're on the right path, and even if you're crawling on that path, you'll get there eventually. We ask you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept our efforts, to forgive our sins, and to give us that inspiration to make this the month of change. To make us those who return back to you constantly, who find you in everything that we do. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow night, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.